Coming up on Theater Talk. There's so lots of uh, shows that have won Tonys that have been running at the time. Tony's not so oh. many, and not recently so much. So are you saying then that everybody's going to front load or back load, actually? Yes, I'm, their, afraid, their that, I'm afraid this is just to going to a, intensify the, the, back the April the back loading of everything opening in, mm. in April. And all you poor little critics who are complaining about all that work you have to do in... Uh, I had to go to the <laughs> theater 16 <laughs> times. <laughs> I was really worn out. My limousine was so <laughs> tired. <laughs> theater Talk is made possible in part by... The CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. Michael, it has been a rather splendid year on Broadway. Yeah, come see, come see. Come. So. And we are here to <laughs> discuss the Tony Awards. And who's going to win and who's going to lose, which is <laughs> far more interesting. Uh, our predictors on this a Tony Award special edition of Theater Talk are my good friend and colleague, Elizabeth Vincentelli from the New York Post. Welcome, Elizabeth. Hello. Jesse Green from New York Magazine. Hello. Michael Musto. Uh, where from out. 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 Oh. I'm, one of, I'm one of the stars of Logo's new show, Cocktails and Classics, where we sit with Michael Urie, the host, and we watch campy movies like Valley of the Dolls and Barbarella. Oh, my God. Can I go on that show? You, I've been having you as a guest on our show for years. I, I want to be invited I'm to I'm not the show. booking agent. I finally got a break. Don't try to take it from me. And, um... Who, oh, yeah. Uh, Patrick, <laughs> Always an afterthought. Patrick Pacheco of uh, New York One on Stage. And also the LA Times, I believe, in Art. Yep. art and Art Info. And Art Info. All right. Uh, welcome, one and all, to our Tony Award prediction table. Let's get to the biggies first. Best Musical. And, Susan, the nominees are... An American in Paris. Fun I want to play airplane. Something Rotten. The Visit. Uh, all right, Michael, uh, do you think there's going to be a, is there a groundswell for The Visit do you detect out there? No. Yellow shoes? They don't have a lot of visitors coming to the box <laughs> office. I must say I'm so tired of being wrong, but even if I changed my choice, it would still be my choice, so it would still be wrong. So yeah. Yeah. wherever I go, it's wrong. It's but in this case, I think I'm right in saying that while Fun Home is a more deserving show, mm -hmm. it's organic, it's original. It's not a warm show. It's not about warm people. It's about a lesbian coming of age as her father messes around with young guys. <laughs> and it's gonna play well. It's so wrong. Play well in Nebraska, <laughs> and they sing and dance about it. <laughs> uh, but American in Paris is building momentum. Not only is it a tremendous box office hit, it's not a slavish adaptation of the movie. Some might say it's a misguided adaptation, but it's original. I don't think it has the star quality, obviously, of the movie. And by the way, this is a year with two adaptations of Vincente Minnelli Best Picture winner set in Paris starring Leslie Caron. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi, too, which isn't even in the mix. Oh, Gigi. So you're an American in Paris. Uh, Elizabeth, your, uh, your sense on this? I'm actually torn this year. I don't have any uh, particular favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, I think an American in Paris is going to win. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, if I may get a little ahead, I think uh, Fun Home will get book and, and score. I wanna play airplane. I wanna play airplane. I wanna play airplane. I wanna put my arms out and fly. That, that's how things are gonna split. Right. Um, so as a friend, as a well, you're Corsican actually, but um, <laughs> as someone who speaks French, what did you think of American <laughs> in Paris? <laughs> Um, <laughs> completely realistic, obviously. <laughs> Do Docudrama. Docu I think the adaptation itself is just awful. The 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 book. So I it's going to win. Book, <laughs> the book is terrible. Craig Lucas, yeah. Oh, it's just embarrassing. It's so heavy-handed, fleet-footed, and heavy-handed uh, show. But it's the production itself is really wonderful, and I think it's going to hit enough bells yeah. that it's going to kind of surge above the other two. I do also like something rotten, which fulfills its mission really well. Right. Uh, I think it's the show that gets the closest to its target. But Jesse, uh, something rotten really is not in the mix for <laughs> best, no, best uh, musicals this year. Uh, it hasn't been said to be, but it certainly could happen that the vote between an American in Paris and Fun Home splits itself and something rotten comes up in the middle. But I actually think the opposite of what you've been saying. I think people recognize that there's something wrong with an American in Paris in terms of its totality as a musical. It has some marvelous things going on. It, mm -hmm. Some people love the dance, some people love the visuals, whatever, but it doesn't really hold together very well. I agree with Susan. I think it's been a terrific season, and I think there's a yes. lot of competition in these categories, and I think this is one of them. Just to defend Craig Lucas and his book for An American in Paris, is you can't have a good show without, a good, uh, without at least a sturdy book. You can't. It's impossible. The public is voting with, by buying tickets, and An American in Paris is, is 
grossing over a million dollars. Well, but Fun Home is sold out. Well, I'm so glad it's to hear a lot that. less money being made, but it's doing as well. And I hope it continues to do as well. I think it needs the Tony. Yeah. So. <laughs> what is going to happen is uh, Elizabeth is right. <laughs> Fun Home is going to win book and score, and American Paris is going to win. And I do think, and sometimes we overplay the out of town voters mm -hmm. uh, who represent about 10% of the 750 voters. But I can tell you that that 10% is solidly, solidly behind in American Paris because that show can tour. And Fun Home, as good as it is, cannot really have much of a tour. But Fun Home and, can and be licensed all over the country. It doesn't matter. There will be productions the, 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 of Fun it Home It everywhere. doesn't matter. The, the, the and Rosie O'Donnell, Rosie is looking for a vehicle. That's right. It's not going to happen. Right. So, no, it's going to be an American in Paris, and uh, score and book will go to Fun Home. All right, uh, Revival. Uh, I, okay, don't. I, would, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't discount Sting winning for the, the last ship. And what do you got? What do we got? Now what have you got? What have we got? You got now. We got now. I don't think so. I think Janine Tesori will get it, and Lisa Cronin did the lyrics. Even though that's really not a good score. Which oh, one? it's a great score. Fun I agree. Really oh, it's a great score. It's a beige score. Oh. <laughs> it's a beige. That's my favorite oh, color. Beige score. <laughs> a beige score, it's, uh, a lot of it is incredibly, it's a very smart and well-crafted score. It is also Nothing very wrong with dull. That. Oh. Excuse no, me, I am changing my major to Sex with Joan is my favorite song of the year. <laughs> you know what is There's three really good songs. Do you have any songs from Fun Home on your ringtone? I love Ring of Keys. No, I <laughs> to accuse myself because I wrote the liner notes yes, for did. the yes, CD, yes. so obviously yeah. my, my taste. It was only twenty five dollars. Suspect. <laughs> so Elizabeth, I, are you saying that that Fun Home's not going to win score? It doesn't yeah, yeah, yeah. win score. I think it may actually go to the last ship. How about uh, best play this year? The curious incident of the dog in the nighttime, disgrace, okay. hand to God, Wolf Hall, parts one and two. Uh, Patrick, what do you think? I think it's going to be Curious Incident of the Dog. There are a few locks, a few almost locks, let's yeah. put it that way. But I think Curious Incident will go. I think there's some support for Wolf Hall parts one and two because it is this lavish epic. But I think Curious Incident has the heart of the Tony voter. Uh, Michael? I don't get it. I was bored for Act One. I thought it got better in Act Two. But it was an event from the second it opened. There were no stars in it. It was not a familiar property. And people lined up to buy tickets because of the dazzle, the sets, the lighting, the projections, the strobes, and the amazing performance by this kid, Alex Sharp. Right, we'll mm -hmm. get to that in a minute, but uh, Jesse, I, I actually was quite moved by The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. I was too, and I think of the plays nominated mm -hmm. and pretty much of the plays that were out there this year, it was the one that came closest, as you put it, to fulfilling its mission. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you could argue about, is it the best interpretation of the original material? Does it completely make sense? Is Act One as interesting as Act Two? It doesn't matter. It, it is clearly the, the best production of a new play. Right, Elizabeth, you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I love Hand to God. Mm -hmm. I'm a really big fan of that, of that show. Mom! But I agree that Curious Incident. What's striking to me is that two of the four plays are adaptations and mm. pretty faithful adaptations. It's a little disheartening, but okay, why not? Hand to God is the only original play there. Uh, no, and, no, and Disgraced. 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 Oh, right, right. Curious Incident is such a, I have to disagree with you, Michael. It, I found it such a moving play. Uh, both, I saw it twice. And I, I, I saw you there, and you were crying. shattered. Uh, best too. revival of a musical. The nominees are The King and I, On the Town, On the 20th Century. I think that the the the, uh, the trend seems to be for The King and I, but I would put in a word for On the 20th Century, which to me is a very very enjoyable old musical comedy that we've never seen before. Elizabeth, they're both great, yeah. except The King and I is a kind of a big problem, which we may get to eventually. Which, which is, is the king. <laughs> right, who can't speak <laughs> English, okay. A little bit of a problem. Whereas on the 20th century, I really adored from beginning to end. So I'm going to predict 20th century, but that's a little bit of a Where are you on this biased one, role. Like, uh, what, well, yeah. I had to recuse myself because I wrote the liner notes to on the 20th century. Oh, my God. What, what, <laughs> but, kind of, what is that? It's like a panel of George Stephanopoulos. <laughs> you write the liner notes. <laughs> I loved on the 20th century, but that show is all gloss and glitz and people conning each other. It doesn't have a that's lot of soul. That's how. It doesn't have soul or heart to it. I think. <laughs> People are going to go to something with Gravitas, which is King and I, which they did a beautiful pageant of. I don't think it's superlative. I've seen better productions in the past, but it's a sweeping pageant. It keeps moving, and it's got nice performances, and it, it's got the edge because of the, the heft that yeah, it has. And the emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about a book that works. That book is yep. brilliant. Yep. Yeah, it is. It's extraordinary. Where are you on this one, Jesse? King and I or on, <laughs> on uh, the 20th century? I have a feeling that 20th century will win, but I don't know why I have that feeling. It, 
Maybe I was shattered when I recently <laughs> went to <laughs> for Susan. I don't know. Yeah. It's the king and I. It's yeah. on the 20th century, I think. That's the surprise. All right, uh, revival what, of oh, a play. The Elephant Man, Skylight. This is our youth. You can't take it with you. This strikes me as a fairly easy one to pick. I think uh, the uh, Stephen Daldry's production of Skylight, David Hare's wonderful play, is one of the best things I've seen all season. Patrick? Uh, brilliant work by Stephen Daldry, not only on this, but also on... The audience. The audience, yeah. uh, which was terrific. Um, I would ordinarily say that, but I don't think you can discount you can't take it with you. Oh, please. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it's it was a, a brilliant Great record. production. Great yeah, but production. it's not running. No one remembers it anymore. A lot of people didn't see it. it There's lots lot of, of uh, shows that have won Tonys that have been running at the time. Not so, so many, and not recently so much. So are you saying then that everybody's going to front load or back load, actually? Yes, I'm, their, afraid, their that, I'm afraid this is just to going to a, intensify the, the, back the, the April back May. loading of everything opening in, mm. in April. And all you poor little critics who are complaining about all that work you have to do in... Uh, I had to go <laughs> to the theater 16 <laughs> times. <laughs> I was really worn out. My limousine was so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, uh, I... I think Skylight is a terrific play and terrific production. I loved it, win. but I'm going with Elephant Man. I know it's closed, but... What? Everyone loves a hot guy pretending to be disfigured. And, you know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> good performances. Alessandra Navola, Bradley Cooper, Patricia Clarkson. Well, I, I think some of them may win their categories, but I don't That's think... I also adored well. You yeah. Can't Take It With You. I thought it was hilariously yeah. done. Elizabeth, where are you on this one? I'm going to be on Elephant Man. I really? Yeah. very <laughs> much dislike Skylight. Why? It's a fine play. The production is kind of embarrassing. What did you? Whoa! Like? I hated Bill Nye in it. I hated the. Whoa. the I'm scared of huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Actually, I'm moving this way. <laughs> he's become a ball of ticks. That's all. It's, he is. It's, he is. He's pretty jumpy on this stage. I fry the chili. And he's kind of cruising on his ticks. And I, I'm the problem is that <laughs> the problem is that so there's absolutely no heat in the between him and Carrie Mulligan. None. They're, uh, every time they got near to Whoa. each other, they're just like, ugh, it's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Did you write that? That's a great quote. <laughs> that, uh, oh, it's so gross. Good. How do you right. spell ugh? As it's, long as we're on it's on the undersling. You haven't seen it? <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Let's talk about actor in, the, uh, in a play. Uh, and the nominees are Stephen Boyer, Hand to God. Bradley Cooper, The Elephant Man. Ben Miles, Wolf Hall, Parts 1 and 2. Bill Nye for Skylight. Alex Sharp, The Curious Incident. Uh, Patrick? Uh, I, I think it's think? Alex Sharp. I think this is an almost another almost lock on the category. And it's a terrific lineup. Stephen Boyer was fantastic. Yes, he was fabulous. And so was Bill Die. And Bradley I mean, Cooper was excellent in the Elephant Man, I thought. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I think that Bill Dye's ticks work for their part. I, I was Blah. fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> I was it's, it's a technical term. Uh, I was <laughs> fascinated <laughs> watching him. I mean, I couldn't keep my eyes off of him. I believe that I'm that character. Away. I believe that I'm relationship. Away. And I thought that set was that amazing. rest. Yeah, I love the that set. That set was terrific. Uh, Michael, who's going to? I uh, liked Bill Nye. I didn't say Bluch. <laughs> Stephen Boyer was also terrific in Hand to God. He's the kid who's in his mother's pu Christian puppet group, and he has the hand <laughs> puppet Tyrone, who becomes possessed by Satan. He was brilliant. But it's not enough of a part to win. Alex. What? Sharp. Oh my God! Sorry, <laughs> Alex Sharp. Oh my hand! Again. Alex Sharp is such a slam dunk here. This is like Julia Roberts and Aaron oh Brockovich. If heaven was on the other side of a black hole, that would mean that dead people would have to be fired into space on a rocket to get there, and they are, so people would notice. Jesse. Well, I think Alex Sharp is going to win. I, I thought it was a really strong category, and not only the ones who were nominated, but you could have filled the, mm. the category with a few others as well. Now you're not for Bill Nye, I know, but who do you think? Who do you think is going to win, Elizabeth? <laughs> I think uh, Alex Sharp is going to be on that wave of love for for the show itself. Mm -hmm. I think Stephen Boyd really deserves it. Yeah. He's basically Amazing. playing two parts, <clears throat> and I love the show. Did you come up with that all by yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be uh, Alex Sharp, who's young and just out of Juilliard and terrific. But I had, someone has made the case for me that there is a lot of support for Bradley Cooper because he, he first of all, he was terrific. Second of all, he's taken the play and everybody who was in it in New York to London, and he's made a lot of people, and there are a lot of investors in that show, a lot of money. And there is something to be said for encouraging the really, really big, big name stars to come to Broadway, especially when they acquit themselves as well as he yeah. did. Yeah. So, mm. it's possible. Uh, all right, uh, leading actress in a play. Geneva Carr, Hand to God. Helen Mirren, The Audience. Elizabeth Moss, The Heidi Chronicles. Women. Carrie Mulligan, Skylight. And Ruth Wilson, Constellation. I would 
like Carrie Mulligan to win because I think she's brilliant and beautiful and so tender in um, in Skylight. But I think Helen Mirren's got uh, got this one all sewn up, Patrick. I agree. I absolutely agree. And it's a brilliant performance. It's fantastic. Yeah, Helen's I, great. I just want to say, though, I mean, she is excellent <clears throat> in it. It isn't that much of a play. And no, it's a vehicle the, for her. It's a vehicle. Really. It's a it is exactly parade. designed. It's a pageant. Yeah. It's exactly designed to promote her and get her her Tony, which is <clears throat> fine with me. She will win it. But... We, we often come down to the question of whether we want to award someone who's doing uh, the best work in anything or somebody who's doing something that itself is great. And uh, by that standard, I would have thought <laughs> Carrie Mulligan deserved it, but you wouldn't. No, 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 no. I think she's wonderful, but unfortunately she doesn't, to me the pairing is terrible. A blech on both your houses. You know what, Helen no, Mirren is the actually, whole show in the audience. I uh, the play is very contrived. It's like, okay, next oh, Prime wait. Minister come in, Margaret oh, Thatcher, you know, how could you say that to me in the newspaper? About this? <laughs> <laughs> but Helen Mirren turns it out, and obviously she's going to win a Tony for the part that she already won the Oscar for, and is that a first? Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth, right. you were going to say something about this? Well, no, category? in terms of prediction, I agree it's Helen Mirren. Who would you vote for? Well, you, I, you can vote her. I you would are be, a voter. I am a voter. Um, I would be torn between Ruth Wilson, actually, and Geneva she Carr. Was, yeah. I would say Helen Mirren also, because even though she did the uh, role of the queen, of Elizabeth in the movie The Queen, in this play, she's playing Elizabeth at all these various ages, and it is an impressive acting feat, it's a technical feat, to see her be 25 in one scene and I think, 85 in another scene. I think in, in general, scene. I guess I'm not a big fan of uh, biopic acting. Uh, I think it's a disease that we are now importing from Hollywood. Uh, where okay. if you're in a biopic in Hollywood, <laughs> <movie. laughs> <laughs> I terrifying. find it completely <laughs> repellent. <laughs> uh, I'm not a, interested in mimicry. That's why when Audra last, won, last year won for... Uh, Audra McDonald for... Uh, Audra McDonald, yeah, for Billie Holiday. I was just like, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you've gone too far. You guys, you are are just <laughs> you guys are weakling. You are weakling. You guys are weakling. You guys are weakling. Insulting of Audra McDonald. I am standing at the idol. I think that gets you kicked out of not just the drama critics, <laughs> but I'm New York City. I'm <laughs> what, because I'm not bowing down at the greatness. What do you think of dog? Angela Lansbury? No. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I love her. Let's right. go to Best Actor in a Musical. Yes, Best Actor in a Musical. Because Elizabeth's and, already touched on that. And the nominees back. are Michael Cerveris, Fun Home, Robert Fairchild, An American in Paris, Brian Darcy James, Something Rotten, Ken Watanabe, The King and I, Tony Yazbek on the town. Uh, all right, do you think, Elizabeth, that it's a drawback for Ken Watanabe that nobody can understand a thing he says well, in The King and I? <laughs> it's, I think it is a bit of a problem. My prediction on this one would be a Michael Cerveris. Actually, yeah. very wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. You know, the thing about Ken Watanabe, when it started, you thought, well, he's doing this phonetically, he doesn't speak English, how interesting, but he's such a sexy good actor. And even though you couldn't understand all the words, you understood every dramatic moment. You understood everything he was doing. But I think his portrayal, from an acting point of view, not just like, let's leave the accent aside, is that the portrayal is pretty one note. I understood everything that he said, and I think he contributed a great deal to the success of that revival, yeah. and I think it's enormously successful, and I think that Kelly O'Hara had somebody to play off of, so I, I disagree. Because I thought they had I disagree, nothing. totally. There was no... Uh, Maybe if and that Bill Nye as the... <laughs> the <laughs> Skylight. In Skylight, you would get okay. a good, good review. Cruising on his ticks. <laughs> We're uh, cruising on his ticks. I thought, you know, it really was a puzzlement what the hell he was saying, but I, I really liked his performance. I did get the intentions. But you uh, He's uh, going to win? No, I think it's between no. Michael Service and Robert Fairchild for American Paris. Yeah. I'm actually going for Fairchild. Service was great as the pervy <laughs> suicidal dad. Robert, Robert Fairchild is the best ballet dancer in a Broadway show. He is not the best actor by a long shot. I didn't say he deserved it, but <laughs> <Okay>. I... <thought. laughs> uh, uh, just but I think Michael Service will win. Fairchild is the kind of uh, performance that a lot of people love to mm -hmm. give praise to yeah. because you don't expect... Yeah. Somebody from the world of ballet is going to show up and sing moderately well, act moderately well, <laughs> dance beautifully. Yeah. But I don't, those aren't the best qualifications to me for best actor. I couldn't understand the thing he was saying, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was a puzzlement. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's going to be uh, Michael Cer uh, Cerveris. 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 He's very good and he's very popular in the community. And let's hit uh, best actress in a musical before we head out. Kristen Chenoweth on the 20th Century. Leanne Cope. Or is that cop on an, in an American in Paris? Master Beth Malone, Fun Home. Simple and true. Kelly O'Hara, The King and I. And Cheetah Rivera, The Visit.
Patrick, I think you should recuse <laughs> yourself <laughs> because you once wrote Cheetah Rivera's one woman show. I didn't write it. <laughs> Are you Terrence voting Minnelli for your friend and business partner, Cheetah Rivera? <laughs> no, but it's a very, very worthy category. It's a lot of competition. <laughs> and who's they're gonna, all terrific. And who's going to win uh, that? It's going to be a toss up, I think, mm -hmm. to some extent, between Kristen Chenoweth and Kelly O'Hara. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Kristen Chenoweth may have sealed the deal by hosting the Tony Award. You think that promotes a good feeling among the I do. voters? I do. Yeah. Well, she also, t truth be told, you know, they had a hard time finding uh, an, an A-list host this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no Hugh Jackman or Neil Patrick Harris. So Kristen Or and Leanne Kopp. Or Leanne Kopp. <laughs> <laughs> or Ken Watanabe. Um, uh, so Welcome to the Tony. <laughs> <That's so good>. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Great. That, please. <laughs> I can't wait for the Facebook campaign now. Yeah. <laughs> Kristen and Alan Cumming have sort of stepped in in a pinch to help out, so I do think that generates good Well, all but year we thought, obviously, it was going to be Kelly O'Hara. This was going to be her sixth, sixth nomination. nomination yeah. um, if she's going to ke keep up with Audrey McDonald, who's won six times, you better start by giving her one, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> plus, it's the role, Anna in The King and I, that won for Gertrude Lawrence and Donna Murphy. It's a winning kind of role, especially yeah. if Julie Andrews cancels out. <laughs> then Kristen Chenoweth opened and was dazzling. She's the ultimate Lily Garland in On the 20th Century. She's hilarious. She sings beautifully. She carries the whole show. Then there was Cheetah lurking around the corner in the visit, and it's like it might be her last show, and it's her last musical, and it's the legend. But she's won before. Kristen's won before. I know she's co-hosting, and it would save time of her running to the podium. But still, <laughs> I'm exhausted from your analysis. Well, I've thought this through, Michael. <laughs> and I'm actually going with Kelly O'Hara, and I know it's a minority, but I think they're going to finally say, you know what? If we don't give it to her for this, when are we going to give it to this woman? Like, way to put a bummer on that wow. award, Kelly. You're, you're getting and it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just because. Ah, right, All right, Kelly, it's your time. And I'm always wrong. Where, where are you on this, Jesse? I, I have no idea. I, I just, however, don't think that people sit there with their ballot and say. You know, she's gosh, she's been nominated five times before. Well, did they sit there and tell she's hosting, she so I'll vote for her? Well, I don't think no, they do that they, either. She's spectacular, whereas Kelly O'Hara is a very garden variety Miss Anna. She well, I don't think she's garden, garden variety. Oh, I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're on that side of the table. I'm so Where are you going to be? That's not me. That's not me. No, I don't know. Who are you going to run down in this category, yeah. Elizabeth? No, I actually I disagree. I really Well, like I want to hear who Jesse is predicting. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. me? I, I don't know. I think it'll be Kelly or Kristen. Uh, that's a, you, you gotta, you gotta I haven't down. decided. Right. It's sitting on my desk. I thought they were both great Okay, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> sorry we wasted our William. time with that. Yeah. William. Yes, Elizabeth, uh, who's going to win here? Who are you voting for and who's going to win? I love both Kelly O'Hara and Kristen Chenoweth. I love them both. So Who are you going to vote for? Who are you voting for? I'm going to vote for Chenoweth. Why? Well, um... Just because, as I pointed out to someone else, uh, just because the role of Lily Garland is made for her doesn't take away from her performance in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a fantastic performance. It's really a no school. I felt blessed to be able to see that. I was just like, my God, this must have been what it was like to watch like Mormon or someone like that. And this it has it all. And, and, and it's that better than charisma, promises, promises, right? You can't. <laughs> I, I'm actually the only one who liked her but, in that. So. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Everybody get out of there. But, but no, so this goes back to why the king and I though, will win the, will win the uh, revival because Kristen was carrying that show. I'd like to do one more before we stop, and that's the best featured actress in a musical. Victoria oh, Clark for Gigi, yes. Judy Kuhn for Fun Home, Sydney Lucas for Fun Home. I see everything. Ruthie Ann Miles for The King and I, and Emily Skeggs for Fun Home. Sydney Lucas was amazing uh, in Fun Home. Sydney uh, George. Extraordinary. 11 years old. But I think that Ruthie Ann Miles will win mm. for King and I. Yeah, that's a great point. I agree, because you have three people from Fun Home who are going to cancel out. So Judy Kuhn would be the front runner. It's her fourth nomination. She's never won, and she is a Broadway treasure. Uh, Victoria Clark has won before, and we preferred Maurice Chevalier singing, thank heaven, <laughs> to her singing. Thank heaven. Uh, so Ruthie Ann Miles for something wonderful. Barbara Streisand. Can you do it in the Japanese <laughs> accent for us, Michael? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want a Facebook campaign against me. Uh, Jesse, who, who are you? Here? Ruthie Ann Miles also, it wasn't just that she sang that song beautifully. She created a, a way of looking at that character along with Bartlett Shear mm -hmm. uh, that is new to me in productions of that show and was terribly moving. So uh, I think she will win, even though I'd be happy with anybody. Yeah. And Elizabeth? S same here. Ruthie Ann. Uh, although I would have preferred if D. Hardy had been uh, Oh, I love D. Hardy. Nominated instead of Victoria Clark, but that's really the quibbling. Yeah, anybody here I would be uh, very happy with, but I would also thank Ruthie Ann. It's such yeah. a strong category. I think uh, Judy Kuhn will take it. 
Mm. Well, Ruthie made a fearsome elder last year. Yes, she did. She did. Oh, she was excellent. And uh, what was that called? The uh... Here Lies Love. Here Lies Love. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's, those are the predictions. We're going to hold you to them all. Uh, Elizabeth Vincitelli from the New York Post, Jesse Green from New York Magazine, Michael Musto from outofthecloset.com. And Logos, Cocktails, and Classics. I expect an invitation to your new To show, watch Michael. it. <laughs> Anytime, Michael. <laughs> and Patrick Pacheco from New York One on Stage and the Los Angeles Times. Thank you very much. Shall we go? One, two, three, eh? Uh. On a bright cloud of music, shall we fly? One, two, three, eh? Uh. Shall we dance? One, two, three, eh? Uh. Shall we then say goodnight and mean goodbye? One, two, three, eh? Uh. Oh, perchance, when the last theater star has left the sky, <laughs> shall we still be together with our arms around each other? And shall you be my new romance? Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Freeze, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, plus public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you and good night.